everyone and welcome to the Lathrom channel. In our videos we cover filming tips, tricks and techniques, equipment and product reviews and many other things that will help you in the world of filmmaking and photography. Check out our videos and don't forget to subscribe. Hello everybody, welcome to the Lathrom channel, my name is Matt, and today we're going to be hitting on something that I keep getting asked more and more by multiple people, and it's in lieu of Windows 10. Should they upgrade, should they stick with 7, is 8.1 okay, yeah, blah 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 blah. And I've also had a couple people that were a little concerned when it comes to being filmmakers and then already doing the free upgrade to Windows 10. Now, for this particular computer, this is the only one that has Windows 10 on it. Okay, I'll, I'll bring that out first and foremost. In all honesty, I did not even get rid of Windows 7. I just ran a dual boot system, so I have Windows 10 on one partition, Windows 7 on another. I'm still kind of partial to Windows 7, even though it's not going to be, you know, it, they're going to start phasing out slowly but surely the updates for 7, which means that we're kind of stuck with going with 10 in the near future, but at the same time, since I'm also a gamer, and the whole DirectX 12 thing, I'm actually kind of really interested in that. But anyhow, without further ado, we're going to go over a couple things here. And as you can see, there's a few things that I want to bring up. You know, Windows 10 Pro. I went with the Pro Edition mainly because, well, because. There's a couple different options. I do not upgrade on a regular basis like everybody else. Even with my Mac, I'm not one of those constant uh, chronic upgraders or updaters. I sit down and I basically do it whenever I want or whether I feel it should need it. Now there's nothing special to this. We're running an 8350 AMD FX chip. Right now it's only clocked at 4.01 gigahertz, 16 gigs of RAM and a 24 bit system or 20 bit 4 bit OS. Now as you can see maybe down at the below there are a couple things that I already have open. Now granted it doesn't have anything open in them but first and foremost I can tell you right now that yes I am running you know Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2015 get out of here After Effects CC 2015 and also HitFilm 3 Pro Granted, the hit film. Oh, get out of here. The hit film three is a trial at the moment, but either way, I have had no issues with this over the last, uh, I'd say, about a week or so. It's really up to you whether or not you want to upgrade to Windows 10. Now, personally, I would say either run a dual boot system <clears throat> or wait, maybe wait a little bit longer. You you can order it, but do not completely upgrade it and there's a reason why there may be different plugins uh, that you might have there might be different you know pieces of software so on and so forth that, that does not completely work very well with Windows 10 that is gonna have to be something that you have to keep in the back of your head that's why I say just run a dual boot it's actually not that hard you just need a partition or an extra hard drive that you can run Windows 10 on. Now, a couple other things here that I want to bring up, and it's actually one of the reasons why I'm starting the Light 10. Keep in mind, I have never touched Windows 8 or 8.1, so if it was a feature called out in Windows 8 or 8.1, do not bash me in the comments. I have no clue because I never decided to upgrade. I was happy with Windows 7 Pro, or, uh, I'm sorry, not Pro, Windows 7 Ultimate Edition, and I didn't want to upgrade. But one of the things I do kind of like here is if I bring over my task manager, as you can see, it looks a hell of a lot different than, you know, what we've gotten in the past, with exception of 8.1. .8 I have a list of what my CPU is using, what my memory is using, my disk, and my network, which actually comes into play fairly well whenever I'm transferring things and whenever I'm doing stuff in the video sense. Also with modeling. I'm happy with this. It also has, it, you know, your performance breakdown is a little bit different. I'm not really complaining with this. The only complaint that I actually have is with Windows 7, I had widgets on my desktop off on my second monitor where, you know, I had all this stuff available on the fly. It told me what disks 
were being utilized, what my CPU was doing, all the different cores, what my memory was, even what my graphics processor was handling. That is going to be something that I have to look into a little bit more in the future. Without, you know, after that, there's a couple things that are, have been integrated that reminds me a lot about my Mac, and right down here is the search web and windows. This is actually kind of convenient. Honestly, I've never even used it yet. I don't even really use uh, the one on my MacBook Pro very often. You know, the little spotlight up in the upper right-hand corner if you have a Mac. With all that being said, do I like Windows 10? Do I suggest that you should get it? Like I said, if you run it in a dual boot, dual boot system, you should be for perfectly fine and okay. Do not jump both feet in because you may be greeted with too many headaches, too many problems, too many issues and errors. Don't go that route. Run a dual boot system. If you have to, go out and get another hard drive. I know it's not exactly the cheapest method or route to go, but in all reality, you can get a 1 gig hard drive for like 80 bucks now or less. I think I've sold one on Amazon for like 59 well, 60 bucks. For a, I'm sorry, not a one gig, but a one terabyte hard drive. So I mean, come on. Other than that, I've had I have yet to come across any hiccups, gripes, complaints with Windows 10. Not saying that they're not there, because believe me, with a new OS, I know they're there. It's just I haven't found them yet. Been using it about a week. Don't really have a lot of gripes and complaints. I do kind of like that it's a little bit more efficient, than, well, at least it seems more efficient than Windows 7 did. Of course, the boots are a little bit quicker than Windows 7. Seems like my video editing goes a little bit quicker. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. I think it's just, you know, them finally getting into that whole efficiency measure, something that should have been done a long time ago. But, hey. I am able to co uh, cop out freaking 1080p without any issues. I've run up to 2K on Windows 10 and haven't had any issues. So in my book, I'm kind of liking that. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, feel free to drop them in the comment box below. I'm glad that you guys tuned in. I hope the uh, title did, you know, didn't uh, begrudge you or seem misleading. It is a good question and felt that it should have been addressed. But Again, I'm glad you guys tuned in. Hopefully I'll see you around in the near future. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.